Okay. So now if you go to oh I probably disable it. Here we go. On lecture one, there's a a few files that you will need. Maybe not today yet. Um because right now it's five thirty. So the indirect animation control, you will need that. I mean, um, probably next section. Let's see. Okay. So now we're going to talk about review Maya interface and understand the hierarchy. Okay. So let me switch the video quick. I want it to be on the main so that you can see the screen all, uh, beside you can see the whole um, not entire the front row of the classroom and I'm gonna share the screen anyway so Maya 2020 and how many of you are using app stream people who are online class um, do you guys use app stream or you guys use your own system Anybody? Um, I don't think I use that. So do you have your computer with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you are on computer. OK, so I mean, if you don't have a application, which Maya, like I said, you can download it for free. So uh, it's better than try to use App Stream. And um, now, if somehow you need it, use App Stream, let me know. I can help you on that, too. So, okay, and um, now for people who are in class here, if you don't see that icon, no big deal, you can just go ahead, type it in, just Maya, and then open it up. Mm. And um, now for today's lecture, you can follow along if you like. Um, you don't need any extra fi uh, files. This is the interface. Here we go. And how many of you don't remember how to work with Maya at all? Anybody? So can I skip the intro to interface? All right. So let's do that. So right now, I am on Maya Classic. So I'm going to switch to full view. And when you're working with a raking, the uh, outliner is kind of friendly option for all of us. <laughs> so we will enable the outliner. And by default, Maya shows some elements that are not hidden from the outliner. So this is default set, uh, default display. Um, we better to create a new project. So under file menu, I'm going to choose project window under project section. There we go. And um, now, if you started the new project, you will need to use this command. File menu, project section category, and then project window. And then you click a new to give a new name. Basically, you started to give a command to Maya software. So I'm going to organize my, you can name anything you want, like week one, things like that. This is what I like to do. I give my, you know, class name, and then I'm going to add the WK1. So week one. Now the location though, um, if you click on the browser, if you're working with your laptop or your computer that you have only a single drive, which most likely you're going to put everything inside the My Document, the document. However, if you have a more than one drive in your system, like on campus here, like if I go to this PC, can you see I have drive C? This is OS drive, the operation system. And then I have a D drive that has 500 something gigabyte. 
and these will be internal drives. Now, some of you may like to connect directly to your external drive. I would not suggest that. I mean, if you come to class and then you wanted to just do something a little quick within like 30 minutes or less, you can connect directly to your hard drive. It's kind of okay. However, the, the problem with the external drive is even though you use a small hard drive, it has a, it doesn't have a direct memory access because it's external. It's connect through the USB and USB connect to the PCI Express or regular PCI 3 and that is not direct memory access. If you install the additional hard drive to your laptop or computer or, or C drive, C drive is direct memory access because it's connect directly to the bad, uh, to get the uh, maximum bandwidth of the PCI Express. And in that case, the read and write will drop less than the uh, um, indirect. So when you hook up with the USB, and those are indirect, and those indirect is depends on the spec of your hard drive. If spec of your hard drive said 500 megabyte read, 450 write, well, it may start 400, not even five, and then we'll start it to drop low, 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 uh, maybe a minute after become 100 megabyte or even less. So it depends on the, um, the setting and the hardware of your external drive also. So now why is important though, sometime though, if you forgot to check about the, the size, if Let's say if you have only 10 megabytes left, for example, if you use thumb drive, you have only 10 megabytes left, and the file size, like for example, hold on, let me explain that after we create this. Okay, so now I'm going to choose the uh, D drive. I'm going to organize my file a little bit. So DTM. 28, 24, SP, 20, 21, TD. Okay. And then 28, 24, SP, 21, 21, lecture. Okay. So I organized a little bit. I wanted to point my location inside that folder when I click select. And can you see right here, D drive, and under separate folder, and another subfolder, the class folder, and then the lecture folder. So this will save in there. So when I click accept, if I go to Window Explorer, Serid, TD, and this is the project, the lectury. So that project week one is inside the lecture. So project, the lectury. Now, Maya need this. Scene will contain all the Maya MB. And when you um, do play blast on your demo, it will save inside movie. If you render as a sequence, we'll put it inside image. If you have texture map, will be inside source images. These are important. Maya need to know where the direction is. Otherwise, when you do save as, Maya will not know where to save. It might save into different projects. So you have to make sure that you did it correctly step. Like when you go to the uh, file menu, you will see under recent project. This will list, by default, I think it's list as 10 list. So any list that on the top will be your current project that you work with. So, so it means if you save as, if you drop the texture on it, if you render sequence, if you render movie, 
it will be inside this project based on subdirectory, based on the type of subdirectory. Okay, so that's really important. Now, I'm gonna save this empty file first, and I'm gonna call. Um, hold on, one moment. I'm gonna call. Let's call week one, right? Let's do zero one. You don't have to name like me. I'm gonna just call hierarchy. Here we go. So we save on it. And now make sure you use save as, because if you save, it might go to the default directory. But save as, see, right now it's on here. So it says 64 KB if I go to property. Here we go. This is what I want to explain it about what might happen when you directly save into your external drive. Can you see the number different here? Size 63.3. Size on disk 64. So it's mean, let's pretend your thumb drive is really small. You have thumb drive left exactly 36. Exactly 36. However, somehow when Maya saved this, Oh, sorry, sorry, how about this? If your thumb drive is, has left only um, 62K, okay? Now, during 62 or even 63, or it could be 63.52 that you have left, and then you save it while you're working on it, it will let you save it. You're going to keep overwrite them, save it over and over. Now, there's a, a little bit of instruction how to save those data. It's not on you, it's on the computer. We'll have to have that instruction and put it on the catch. Now, when you finish, you close down the application, you go back home, and then you come back and reopen, it said error, cannot read the file. It's just because while you were saving that, it has 36.5, however, Without the instruction, it less than, I mean, it's okay to have that, but with instruction, it less than 64. So it can't read. And um, does it make sense to you? So there will be a time that if you have a small hard drive, you might get into this problem. Now, the other problem is, is sometimes if you knock it over your system or you kind of pull the plug by accident, you lost some data. So you may not be able to open your Maya software again, uh, Maya, pro, Maya file again, so you will lose it. Now the trick on here is um, you save into a regular drive, and then when you're done, you just copy this, the whole project folder, and I'm gonna go to my, pro, uh, my, my external drive, and I'm gonna just paste in here. So this is how you back up, go back and forth between places or from your own computer too. And um, now when you finish each section, I encourage you to save more than two places. So to be safe. And okay, now let's go back to working with the hierarchy. So right now, after I save, can you see under recent file I have 01 hierarchy. Okay. So there's empty scene. I'm gonna go to polygon and I'm gonna add sphere. So we have sphere one. Okay. And I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna use top view just for now. And um, if you hold X key, you can snap to grid. X key. I mean, you don't really have to snap, but when we snap, it looks kind of a little nicer. <laughs> okay, so, and then we're gonna create another object. I'm gonna create cube, and then I'm gonna move this. There we go, to this way. And you can duplicate it, Control D, hold X key, and then you can snap. Now, 
when you press Shift D, this is really interesting. Let me try it again. Let me show you slowly. So now, if you control D and then hold X and let it snap, let go, you can repeat that function. It's under here, edit, duplicate with transform. Can you see? So you can get the next object will move, like repeat that move command exactly same location, no, same distance, relative, relative distance. So that's three. Let's turn on shading mode, uh, shading menu on this viewport and enable wireframe on chat so that we can see the wireframe. Now I'm going to create a, I'm not going to use slender, let's use a torus because so that the shape has a little distinguished shape. I'm going to do snap. And I think my terrace is too big. You can scale it down. It's temporal. Okay. I think, hold on guys, let's spread these apart a little more. Here we go. Okay. And this one too. Okay. Now, you can duplicate the terrace, Control D or X. Snap right here, control D again, and here we go. So that's it. Save your file. Now we can talk about hierarchy here. So the hierarchy is first of all, when we look at on the hierarchy in Maya is everywhere. So let's select the sphere and look at on your channel box. The top section, these are attribute editor. It's the first hierarchy, and then you have a shape hierarchy that contain the input under shape hierarchy. So this is top hierarchy, second and third. Can you see? Now, to look at more clearly, you go to attribute editor, the third icon here. Now you can see this. This is hierarchy. The first tab is the top hierarchy. And the top hierarchy in Maya is the translate node. It's top hierarchy. And then you have a P-sphere shape hierarchy. So this is contained the display of this object on OpenGL. And then you have polysphere. These are extra hierarchy. It's called input. Because when you look at this, that's the input. Can you see? So input contain a parameter because these are a primitive object. If you um, if you delete history, you will not see this. And then you have the lowest one is initial shading group. In it depends on what shader you add. So now. We're going to use attribute editor quite often to do raking. So just make sure you understand the hierarchy on this attribute editor. The left hand side will be the highest, low, lower, lowest, and another one, Lambert. Now, can you see right here? Because these are, if the tab are longer, you can cycle in through this with that arrow icon. And then you have the input and output. So this is incoming, which is anything that before Lambert is the initial group. So if you go to here, it will be the lower. So now, right now, um, this will make sense later when we add more uh, attribute in, in the future. But that's a brief explain on the attribute editor and its own hierarchy. Now, what about the object hierarchy? Right now, every one of these are a lowest hierarchy of the world space. This is the world space. On the world space can have any number of individual. Same thing as hierarchy, actually. 
So now, let's take a look at edit menu. You have parent and unparent. These are the main that we can use to deal with hierarchy. And the parent is, shortcut is P, unparent is shift P. How do we do that? To parent something, it means you want it to put some object into a hierarchy, low hierarchy of something. So to do that, I want these three to be a lower hierarchy of the big sphere. So you can hold, I can reach and drag and hold shift to add. The last object that add will be the highest hierarchy or will be a parent. And then you go to edit, parent. So now let's take a look at under outlining. Make sure you turn on outlining. Can you see right now, because I select these three objects first and shift select the sphere and then parenting it. So my Yao will snap back to focus on the original selection. But when you look at on the outliner, if I expand that part sign, you will see all cube are uh, under sphere. So it's mean at the moment, sphere, uh, P sphere has three children or three branches. You can you can refer to branches, you can refer to like family trees, stuff like that. So now if you need to move everything together, you will select the top hierarchy to move it. Like that. I'm gonna undo control Z. Also you are allowed to animate or change the position of the lower hierarchy without affecting the upper hierarchy. So once again, if you move the upper hierarchy or translate anything with upper, the lower will follow. So now let's nesting it. I can select this donut shape and I'm gonna shift select this cube one. I'm gonna go to edit, parent, here we go. So now when you look at it, if I collapse all, you can hold shift key and click to toggle collapse. Here we go. Now, don't hold shift key, just click. Can you see? Sphere has three branches, but one of the branch has leave. You can say it. A parent has three children, and one children has a grandchild. So now let's try this too. Grab these two and shift select the cube number three. Edit parent expand. You will see this. Here we go. So now can you expand all of these? You can click one by one or hold shift click to expand all. If I select the grandchildren, look at the highlight. The bright highlights indicate the selection and then the dark highlights indicate that there is a selection inside that hierarchy. So if I collapse this, can you see it look like that? And um, now try not um, if you understand this, you will not get confused when you try to select the object or component and try to re-hierarchy and so on. So now, if I grab the branch, can you see? The leaves will follow. Here we go. And also, you can do infinite, like if I do cube. Let's rotate that cube. Minus 90, okay. and then uh, I'm going to reposition a little bit. How about right there? Let me duplicate more. Okay, so this guy can be a shower of this. I'm going to press P. I select the children first, shift select the parent, and press P to parent it. 
So if I hold shift and click the plus sign, we'll expand all. So it's mean you can add more hierarchy, nesting more and more and more. So now, um, can you create one? I'm going to use this. OK, let's talk about this a little bit. Now, on the disk, let me snap to, how about that one? OK, on the disk, I want you to do this. If you go to edit, group, you can group a single object. When you do that, Maya will create a group node on top of this. And the group node will be, pivot point will be placed on the center of the world span. Now, why do we need this? There will be a time that you don't want to animate directly to this disk. Or this disk has another controller. Let's say these guys control the rotation of this. So it means you cannot pair it to this or that. It's going to become a, um, or, or, or this guy, it will become conflict with the hierarchy. So you add a preservation node, which is the group node, act like that. So that's one thing. And we can change the pivot point. You select the group node, press D. And then I can hold V key and snap to vertex. Or I'm going to let go. You can press D. You can also use modify center pivot. What it does is going to center the selection of the member of the group. Oops, what am I doing? Here we go. Can you see? If you have two objects, we'll select the, uh, we'll reset, the, not reset, we'll move that pivot point into the center of two elements and then freeze it. Okay, so now we have a group node. I can parent it to this one. So it will look like this. And uh, when we work on, when we started to work on this first project, you will get to this point. We're going to add a lot of group node on top of things to prevent the uh, transformation and so on. So now, once again, this is the basic hierarchy. And you can unparent. Like, for example, if I select the group node, I go to edit, unparent. It will move that off that hierarchy. So now, if I select P, Q, Three that has all of this. Can you see? There's a bunch of stuff in there. If I go to ungroup, it will look like this. So basically, it just remove the uh, whatever is on the top. So now it's, it's a little confusing between group and and uh, ungroup and unparent. So basically, if Everything is inside there, hierarchy. If you go to edit, unparent, it will move off that hierarchy. For ungroup, basically just if you have a, if you select the object that has a group node, which is the world node, it just remove that node. That's all. Um, now, when do we need to do that group like this? If you have these are uh, isolate. And you don't need it anymore. You select the group node, and then you ungroup. OK, now I can undo. But if you do this, select the disk, edit, and then you unparent. It leaves the group there. So you still have to delete them. So it means it's better if you have a group node, and you can identify it by this icon, even though if you rename it, you can see that icon. And then you just go to edit, ungroup. And there's another thing is uh, in the future when um, we don't really do modeling much. If you modify, detach, and attach surface, Maya will keep the group node on top of it. So you have to delete history and then ungroup. If you don't ungroup, you can have that group on top of your object all the time. So that might be another uh, issue there. OK, so now. I think we are good with the hierarchy at this point. I'm going to save scene. And um, one more thing, though. Um, 
let's say if these are really complex file, you want it to, after you save, and then you're going to save scene as and put number two on it. So that is something wrong with number two. You can come back, you can go back to number one so that you don't have to start it over. So try to do that. Now, I think we got have uh, one hour, right? So let's do a little more. Are you guys doing okay? Okay, so one more. In dialect animation control, can you just right click, save link as, and you need to put it inside a project folder. So let me copy mine too. So, well, I should do it so that you can see how it works. So I'm gonna <coughs> save link as, and I'm gonna go to my project folder. Make sure you go to your project folder that you just created. Inside the scene, save inside there. There we go. <coughs> now after you save inside there, you can go to File Menu, Open, and you will see it in there. Can you see? Maya know exactly where to look at. So open this file. This file, basically, I just create some basic objects so that it makes sense. Here we go. So now save this as after you download it. You're going to call just 01 or breaking or something like that. Different name so that you can go back to the original if you need if you need it to. So here we go. Now we're gonna rotate this wheel and then moving the arrow icon. So now what you need to do is driven key. Driven key has a little more flexibility to the uh, um, to to the animation and simple. Connection editor editor has less flexibility but simpler than driven key. Expression can be really complex because you can really create a slightly offset motion, better control in the motion than, than this connection editor. And I'm not sure about driven key. It's about similar. There are certain things that you can't use. You want to use expression. There are certain things uh, when you have more object to be controlled, that will be faster to use expression. So. Let's talk about the easy one first, connection editor. So now, this is what we're going to animate. Before you do anything else, this is common. You need to face transform. So modify, face transformation. Here we go. So now see it nice and clean. Now the input, we need to clean this. So edit, delete by type, history. We'll clean the input. Before you rigging all the input, you need to be clean before you rig because the input will contain only function of your rig. If it's not the rig function, do not leave it there. It causes more problem. Now let's check the arrow. Before we set animation, we need to clean this. So go to modify, face transformation, under shape node, there's no input, so it means there's nothing to delete, so you're fine. Save your scene again. So what we're going to do is, we're going to rotate this in C direction and drive this object up and down. Okay. So up and down, you select the uh, object, and you can grab the, uh, grab the tripod on the um, move to. You can look at on the... Uh, World space coordinate right here too. So this is why now when I move it, see it's show on Y attribute. Okay. So this is rotate X 
uh, rotate Z attribute. So now, to do connection editor, the easy way is to deselect everything. Under window, general editor, and then look for connection editor right here. Look like this. Really easy. Now, when you select on screen, the first hierarchy will be selected. So there's an input and output. So the output is the object that will be controlled, that will control the other object. The input is the object will be controlled. You can see from here too. So it means from this side to that side is control. This side is the controller. This is the object being controlled. So we'll put this on the left under output. And what we are looking at is we are looking at on rotation. Can you see that rotation? And we're going to click expand because we want to see the each attribute of or each axis of the rotation. Now select the arrow and then drop load it into the right side and we're going to look for translate. Translate. There we go. So it looks like this. Okay. Now, we're going to select Rotate. And can you see, after we highlight the Rotate on the output, Maya kind of limited information for you what you can link. The whole translate com uh, attribute is gray color and indicated only the bright white color to display that you can link one of these or two of these but not all of them at once so we wanted to link to translate y now can you see you see it's become italic style font type italic so now this is what you do you grab this object and rotate it here we go. Now, at this point, can you see it's a really fast? Because rotate one unit equal to move one unit. That's why it's fast. If you want this to slow down, we have to use expression. So this is what the limitation of that. The simple way, but has less control. And I'm going to put that back to zero. You could link more than one attribute. What if we do rotate like this on y-axis? Let's make rotate y-axis and spin this. This is on c-axis. Here we go. So now before we move on, can you see if I select this object? Let me switch to selection two. No highlight on any kind on this, but if you select the object that control by, you will see the yellow icon, uh, yellow color. The yellow color indicates a connection. It's color coded. If you do expression, will be a kind of magenta instead. So now what we can do is I already test. If I rotate on Y axis, I can highlight rotate Y. And can you see when you highlight rotate Y? On the uh, input object, the translate Y disable because you cannot have two control attribute and control only one single attribute. You cannot. You can have one controller and control different attribute. It's fine, but not the way around. So translate Y, and then we're going to do rotate. So expand the rotate. Now on rotate, Everything is clean because nothing taken yet. Translate, the Y is already taken. So rotate, we already test is rotate Z. So it's mean if I rotate Y axis, it go like this. Can you see? Let me move that away a little bit. There we go. And I can do rotate Z. There we go. And once again, on the Rotate 2, let me double click on this. It's set to object space. If it were space, that's going to cause a little confusion.
Can you see? This is Z based on the worst pair. This is Y, but then when you grab Y, it's rotate a bunch of stuff because it's actually rotate through the axis in order to maintain that shape align up to the world. Okay. There's a certain thing you you want it to use more space. There's a certain action you don't want it to be more space. So switch back to the object. The rotations by default always set to the object. Okay. So I just double click on that too. So now this is what we get. And I can zero it out. If I do a little crazy like this, I can zero it out. See, because our attribute is so clean, we can zero things out really easy and everything go back as it's supposed to. And you can do more. Like, for example, if I do this way, I can control the scale if I want to. So this is translate, uh, uh, rotate X, right? So let's do rotate X. Select that, and it's already loaded. And I'm going to look for scaling. So scale. I want to scale uniformly. Here we go. I select all three. Now, when I do that, can you see it's gone? It just because of this, our rotate X is set to zero. So it means everything is go bad. So now, if I put this one, it's come back, but rotate one unit. So, and if I rotate more, can you see? There we go. And I can reversal. There we go. Okay. So, I'm going to put, I'm going to unlink it. How to unlink? You just click on unlink. Toggle and link on the input. Here we go. Not the output, has to be on the input. Same here, if I select, uh, what rotation is it? Rotation Y, I can unlink it. So now, if I grab rota uh, rotation Y, it won't, hold on. Oh, oh, still on translate, I forgot. Hold on, I need to go back to translate. Rotation Y, here we go. Here we go. Translate Y. Hold on. What am I doing? Why it does that? Let me make sure uh, it's object mode. Okay, now it's work. I, I think I forgot to change the values. So I unlink them. There we go. So, say it. So now set given key. Oh, let's go back to expression quick because we're already there. Now the expression, we can write the expression of this rotate x. So this is what we need to do. We're going to have to face this transform again. Face it. Delete history. Edit delete by type. History. And face this one also, otherwise will cause the problem. So now we're gonna write mm -hmm. the expression. So to write expression, you can select the object. Um, we're gonna do this. We select the object that will be controlled by, and we're gonna do up and down on y-axis. So you. Highlight the attribute label on Y axis and go to edit expression. And now it will select the arrow and show the translate. And this is the arrow mesh to dot translate Y. You can highlight that and meet a mouse and drop it here. And then you're going to set equal to rotation y on here. Now, we need to re look at the name of this object. If I deselect it, can you see it's gone? So I'm going to have to reselect it again and highlight translate y. 
and drop this back again. And the reason is you need to make sure that you remember, you know, which object you will need to, to write expression. So that's the name, hand wheel underscore mass two. So now I'm going to select this object again and look at for translate y. And you can type it in or you can middle mouse drag and drop like this. But then you're going to have to equal sign. And then you're going to put that name, hand. These are case sensitive. So it means it has to be exactly same name. Otherwise, it will not work because my job will not, it will, will not be able to find. Um, they will look for the name you type. And then you're going to call rotate all lowercase. And then you're going to put C, right? So it has to be capital like this. And then you put a semicolon to stop execution. And if you like, you can create expression name. You can call like, how about, uh, we'll move something. And then I'm going to put express. Oops, sorry. What am I doing? <laughs> Here we go. Express. Oh, I, I was wondering what I am doing. Express. Here we go. Maybe it should put exp. That's it. Okay. And now click create. If you write it correct, it's gonna say it, result will move express. It's done. So now let's try. When you select the <coughs> arrow key can you see there's a purple color not magenta i was wrong purple color so now indicate that it's an expression it's not a connection like this guy this one is connection this is expression it's just to show the uh, color coded so that you can identify quickly that what are those so now when i grab this turn on rotate two and rotate here we go and now, if you feel like, hey, it's kind of too fast, well, expression has a little control that you can work with. So now, it doesn't matter what you select or not on the screen. We have the name. Under select filter, if you switch to uh, by expression, can you see there will be a list of different expression that you create inside this scene. So now when you highlight, you will see the code and you can edit them. Um, at the moment, let me, if you select the surface here, and you, let's say if you didn't switch, you select the object and then you highlight the object, you should be able to see this on one of this. Here we go. But you still need to select the attribute that has been assigned. So the best way, the easy way is using expression name so that you can see all the lists. You don't even have to select the object. So let's do something a little bit on this. If um, Let's do, make it two times slower. So two divided. So divided by two and um, you could put a bracket if you like. I don't think we need it for now. Let's click edit. Now, division by zero so is incorrect. And division, hold on. Divided by two. I think I might have to do this. I think, hold on. Let's do this. L let's not use division. Let's use multiply, but point one zero multiply. There we go. 
Here we go. So, and now let's test. Can you see a little slower? I don't know why division doesn't work, so use point one to make it. You can make it slower also. Let's add point zero zero one and click edit. Now, so now it will be more slower. So you have a little more flexibility on the uh, expression editor. Okay, so now I'm going to put it back to one. Here we go. So we're going to close that. Let's save it. Now the set given key, you can do more fancy than just expression. So now to do that, let's clean every attribute again. I intentionally leave those so that you have to do this all the time. It's just uh, so that you become a little more familiar with the process because if you don't do this, it's going to have a lot of problems. So you have to freeze transform, delete history, everything has to be clean. If something short here is mean you use it for your animation. Okay, so this is going to be the last one and I almost stop. So now, let's make a little plan. We could drive this using rotation. You could do like moving to the left, coming to the right, and zigzag. How about let's play with the zigzag thing. So now how do we do it? Deselect everything. Under window, and, uh, oh, sorry, guys. Uh, we have to switch the module. So change to animation module. Okay. And then under key menu of the animation module, set different key. And make sure you go to the sub control, uh, no, the sub menu, and then choose set. This is the set different key. There we go. I'm gonna leave it right there. Now, this is the driver. This is the driven. I'm gonna select the driver. This is gonna be the driver, and then I'm gonna load to driver. And you see the attribute here. And we're gonna work with a rotation Z. Now you select the driven object. Load on the driven. Now. On the set driver, uh, set driven key, you have the top part is the driver and the driven. These are the outliner of set driven key. These are the attribute. So when we do set driven key, you should use the outliner of the set driven key to select the object. Because sometimes you select the wrong object if you have multiple objects on screen or even select the wrong attribute and things doesn't work or things work in the wrong way and so on. So now what it does is it allow you to specify the key point or the position or the rotation by insert the keyframe. And to make this even more clear, can you under panel, I want you to choose save uh, let's do layout, top stack, two plane stack, like this. This one is the font view, uh, the top view, or oh, font view, my font view. But on this window, I'd like you to switch the panel to uh, hypergraph. Hypergraph. No, graph editor, sorry. I'm really bad. <laughs> Here we go because I want you to see the keyframe that has been created. Okay, so now we're gonna highlight translate Y. Okay, and once again, we're gonna move down left and right. So there's Y and X. So it's mean we want both X and Y together. X and Y together, like that. So, now, what we are telling Maya is, look at the selected object, hand wheel mesh, and looking at rotation Z, and then this will be an output, and this will be incoming from the output on rotate Z, plop into two attributes. So when I set key, now can you see there's a keyframe there? 
there's an arrow mass, uh, ar arrow mesh, and then there's a keyframe. It's indicated that there's an incoming keyframe that control this from somewhere. So now we see that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to specify what would happen if I do rotate. Let's do rotate 45 degree. Let's try. Oh, this is 90. So minus 90 on that direction. So a lot of time I don't really know exactly what number is. I rotate it first. And then I look at on the number of the attribute and then just specify the uh, event number or something like that. So now we tell them that, okay, Maya looking at hand wheel mash when attribute set to um, minus 90, and then we will tell what hap what's going to happen with the arrow mash. So you select the arrow mash, and can you see? That's right there. These are set different key. So now, First thing I want to do is I'm going to move this down. I mean, you can play around like this. I'm going to move one unit. It has to be down, so minus one unit. How about minus one? I think minus one might be too less. Let's do minus two. Okay. And also, I wanted to move this to minus positive, minus two also to the, to the left. Here we go. So after you're telling that, you go to here and click set second key. So now, can you see there's a two key in there? Right there, let me press A, here we go. Two key. So now, let's have more fun. We're gonna move it, oops, sorry, I forgot. Select with that. So let's do minus 180. So minus 180, and what's gonna happen? We're gonna put it down, will be minus Four on translate y, but we're gonna switch this to positive two. So let's go to the other side and set different key. Here we go. Look like this. And um, now this might looks a little crazy at the moment. Don't worry about that yet. So now let's do it again. Let's do 360 degree in total. So now we're gonna do. Um, I mean, you can hold shift key up and then rotate. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's, I shouldn't do that. My bad. Okay. So rotate that section 270. So 270, type it in after you rotate. And then let's do it again. Act, activate the select the arrow mesh on the outliner of set different key and then we're going to move this down more two more so it will be six and then we're going to shuffle it to the left so this one will be negative two here we go i'm going to just play and set another key so now we have three key oh, no four key now so four key one more so click on that and then this time you're going to do minus 360 so one loop and then do the same active the error mesh let's move it down more so it will be it and then shuffle this back to positive two set another key so now we have five key so let's test so i grab this and then here we go. I can reverse it back. Sorry, I should have moved. Can you see? Like that. And you can do more than this. This is just a basics one. So, and when you set the key, you don't set the key on this anymore. You're going to animate from this wheel. So now, there's another thing we can do. Like, for example, you can actually p play around with let me isolate this. If you don't want easing, if you want to be like really zigzag, you could just change this to linear. And this one you could do, you can leave it there and see how it looks. Can you see? So left and right are more linear, but you have easing from top to bottom when you set the when you set the animation. And also when you set the animation, you can also 
set the key that let's say if um rotate from one right i'm gonna press rotate z so i'm gonna set that key and then from 200 120 i'm gonna set it again and then i'm gonna do minus 360. so and let me press a here we go minus 360 oh i forgot to set the key sorry set the key here we go so now look like this you can have easing in and easing uh, easing out and easing in on the main control one moment uh, playback speed here we go so can you see it's a little slow to start and then slow to stop but the left and right, they're still consistent red. So there's a lot of flexibility on the set different key. And um, we're going to use that set different key a lot too. Okay, that's it for now. Any questions, guys? And um, next section, we will start it to uh, rigging. On the, we will work on the auto rotation and things like that. Okay, so all right. And um, let me check, bro. Let me stop the uh, video. Now, for our video, will be about two hours before it's finished because I need to upload it to uh, YouTube.